In this video, I'm going to work through the Comp284 Week 4 tutorial. This is one of the written tutorials that um, I put in deliberately to get you used to uh, describing things in a way that you'd describe them, describe them on an exam rather than just the way you'd um, implement them in code in the project. We'll start off just with the multiple choice questions. There aren't actually going to be any multiple choice questions on the exam, but they're, they're quite useful as prompts to help you to understand things. Um, so version control and git. Which of the following git commands could cause a merge conflict? Um, well, of course, here, it can only cause a merge conflict if it involves a merge. So what does git fetch do? Well, git fetch fetches any of the um, the commits and uh, the, the bits of the directed acyclic graph of history uh, that might be up on the remote up on GitHub and uh, but not yet down in the local repository and it pulls them down into the directed acyclic graph but it doesn't merge anything. Doesn't do a merge, can't cause a merge conflict. Git diff, git diff looks at um, the files in a snapshot and the files in another snapshot compares them uh, using the diff algorithm and works out uh, so what lines are different between these two snapshots that's not a merge it can't cause a merge conflict git branch branch name well that creates a new branch but it doesn't merge anything so it can't cause a merge conflict git pull however is equivalent to doing a git fetch and a git merge. Getting the uh, the commits from the remote repository and merging them in. And so that's the one that does emerge, and so that's the one that could cause a merge conflict. Okay, question two, version control and git. A fast forward merge creates no commit, creates a new branch pointer, eliminates branch pointer, normally results in a merge conflict. So which is it? Well, what is a fast forward merge? Uh, if you recall, we could end up with a couple of different situations uh, in a merge. Uh, suppose we've actually diverged, and so for instance, suppose our branch, and say we're on master, is here, and suppose the other branch is called feature, and we're on master, so head points here and we decide to git merge feature. Well, in this case, it actually has to do a merge. They, these things have deviated, there's gonna be some changes need to be brought across, and so we're going to end up with um, a merge commit. Uh, but we might not be in that situation. We might be simply in the situation where we're on master and master's branch pointer is pointing to this commit and since that's the one that's checked out we'll point head there uh, but someone developing a feature has created a new commit and so feature is up to here and so then if we're on master and we do git merge feature well our branch is just behind this branch and so all it needs to do is fast forward the pointer. That branch pointer and head will go with it just need to be moved over here. And so we've just moved the pointers. That's what makes it a fast forward merge. And so of these, uh, a fast forward merge creates no commits. Well, it didn't create any commits. It just it just moved the pointers. Um, didn't create new branch pointer, didn't eliminate a branch pointer, and certainly didn't result in a merge conflict. All right. Question three, test-driven development. Which of these comes earliest in test-driven development practices? New feature code that compiles, new feature code that does not compile, a test case that passes, a test case that fails. Um, so if you recall, there's the little phrase that you could remember for this one, which is red, green, refactor. Red, green, refactor. That's kind of the catchphrase for uh, test-driven development. Red, what is this? Well, this is, um, we write a test 
and it should fail because we wanted to see if is the is this already implemented uh and for for for, for a new feature uh no it shouldn't so we should end up getting a test that fails we then write any old code to make that test pass to implement the functionality that's required and so this is where the coding is happening and here we refactor we tidy up the code so of these well new feature code that compiles uh, that comes here that comes at step two new feature that code that can does not compile well I guess we'll produce some along the way of getting a new feature that code that compiles but that we're still talking about step uh, step two uh, the first step is going to be this D here a test case that fails <clears throat> Okay, let's move on now to the directed acyclic graphs. So in the following diagram, head is the pointer to the branch and snapshot that's currently checked out in your working directory. So this is what we've got checked out. This is uh, the, the, the represents where, where that's pointing for the for the, the files in our filing system, the thing the stuff that we're editing. And this is the history so we've got a couple of commits going past um, to make this easier because when we did this in the tutorial we kind of got a little bit tangled where I drew one diagram um, the graph was the same but I'd drawn it sort of upside down from the other one it got a little confusing so I'm going to copy this over and I'm going to actually label them I'm not going to give them hashes but I'm going to give them letters so let's call that one A and then B C and at the moment, master is there, as is head. All right. So let's have a look at this. What is going to happen after we perform each of these steps in turn? Uh, pardon me, juggling my papers around the place. And so the first one we want to have a look at is git branch new branch. What's going to happen? to this if I go git branch new branch well git branch will create a new branch for me it won't check out that branch it'll just create the branch for me it, I'd need to pass it a flag to get it to check out for me what's a branch well a branch is one of these pointers and uh, so git check uh, git branch new branch uh, we will end up with new branch like this okay so we've, we've checked it out. Uh, sorry, we, we, sorry, we've got done git branch new branch. We haven't checked it out yet. Step two, we're going to go git checkout new branch. What does git checkout do? Well, we had got um, this branch checked out and we were on master with this code uh, in, in our working directory. And we say, well, we don't want this one. We want this branch. And so we're going to move head, which represents where we're, what we've got checked out is going to come down here onto new branch it's not actually going to change any of the files in our working tree because actually that's still pointing to the same snapshot but now head is looking at new branch okay step c some code is edited what does this do to the directed acyclic graph what does editing files do to git history absolutely nothing after step three still looks exactly the same okay step four git add dot so we add some files into the index into the stuff that's going to be committed in the in the next commit and we go git commit minus m and we give it a terrible terrible commit message a terribly uninformative commit message of made a great change what's going to happen well we've got a new commit so we are going to have a new commit and uh, that's going to be its parent with where we were and so let's call this one d so we've now got a new commit um, but we're doing this while we're on the branch so some stuff's going to move along so let's rub those out and i'm sorry my eraser doesn't actually completely rub everything out uh, to do this um, new branch is now pointing at d as 
and head we're still on new branch okay so now what's going to happen git check out master we had got this checked out now we're going to check out master where is master master is back over here so we're now it's going to change the stuff that's in our in our working directory what we've got checked out moves back over here so now we're back over there okay and now we go git merge new branch so we're on master and we're doing git merge new branch so we're merging new branch into master well master is strictly behind new branch so this is going to be a fast forward commit and we're going to move those pointers forward and suddenly master is now up here and we're still on master but now looking at commit d and so there we've got to the end of what's happening to that directed acyclic graph for each of these now because this is a video i've been doing erasing things and writing it out for each of those on the exam you would just redraw a little diagram uh, for each of them okay let's now in fact for the next one i will do the the so i do the redrawing the diagram let's see if we can do, do, do the redrawing the diagram so the next part part three directed acyclic graphs with a remote so what we've said is on github repositories date directed acyclic graph looks like this one two three four five and let's let's give them some letters again let's just label these so that we know which ones we're talking about let's go and say a b c d e and down here on the developers machine and i'm going to say that these are the same ones uh, you might want to uh, write in a little assuming that these three are those three write that down if you're making assumptions on the exam it's a good idea to write them down so that i know that you've assumed that okay question one what does the origin slash master pointer represent what does this represent well it's a branch pointer and what this one represents is this is the local repository this is what's on the remote repository this thing might not have heard from the remote repository in the la uh, in a while origin master represents where the local repository last heard that the remote repository called origins master pointer was up to now obviously it's a bit behind the time because uh, origin ma uh, on origin master is now up to here but origin slash master is still pointing to c so last time the local repository heard last time it did a fetch or a pull um master up here was obviously still pointing back over here why might origin master in the local repository not point to the same snapshot that master points to in the origin repository so why is this the case well i fact i sort of gave that away when i was talking about the previous question uh why because well at some point last time we did a git fetch or a git pull um that is where master was pointing to but since then other people have been pushing stuff up to origin committing things to and pushing them to github uh, but we haven't done a pull or a fetch since then so our local repository doesn't know about these uh, new snapshots that have come into the origin repository okay now i need to find here is the next part of the question so sketch what the developers this one directed acyclic graph looks like after each of these steps is performed in turn um sorry sketch what the developers directed acyclic graph looks like after each of these steps is performed in turn first one some code is edited what does that do to the the git history absolutely nothing editing files doesn't change git history okay git add dot git commit minus m added some great code how is that going to change the history so we're going to go from well we're not going to we're never going to lose any of the old commits so let's just draw those in straight away they're always going to be there in the history unless we do some horrible changing history that uh, we're not going to do uh, but so we do 
git add dot git commit minus m added some great code. Um, sorry, git add dot git commit minus m. This is not going to change where the local repository thinks the remote repository is up to. So first thing we can do is we can say that, well, actually, origin master is still going to be sitting exactly there. But we've made a new commit on this branch. And so we are going to have a new commit. What letter was I up to? I was up to E there. So this is going to be commit F here. And that's now where master is going to point to. And that's where head is going to point to. OK, so that's where I'm up to after step B. Now, step C. The next one asks me to do git fetch. What's git fetch going to do? Git fetch is going to fetch any snapshots from origin um, that we haven't heard about. And so git fetch, we're going to hear where master is up to on GitHub. So origin master is going to shift. When git fetch doesn't merge anything. Our local master isn't going to move. We've not done a merge. If we, we, we've, we've not merged origin master uh, into master with this. So let's first of all draw down these commits. And this is where the shape of the graph is going to start looking different. Because up there I did A, B, C, D, A, A, B, C, F. Here I've done A, B, C, D, E in a straight line. But now to draw these in, I'm going to need to put D, E. So in, from a graph perspective, it's the same. The connectivity is the same, but um, layout on the page is changing slightly from what um, uh, from what we had for the remote up here. And that was the bit that got a little bit confusing in the tutorial. Um, with Because uh, these were unlabeled plots. Like, oh, is that one D? Is that one? Etc. So, so let's put the labels in uh, to make it nice and clear. And so now origin master, sorry, on origin master was pointing here so now after the git fetch that is now where we think where this local repository last heard that origins master was up to so origin master is now pointing to e but we haven't merged anything in and so our local master is still pointing to f and we haven't changed what branch or commit we've got checked out so our head is still pointing there so that's what it looks like after a git fetch. Next, D, which is git merge origin master. What's this going to look like after git merge origin master? Well, what's that going to do? And you might want to write it down on the, on the page if you like. Git merge origin master is going, we're on master and we're merging origin master. Origin master is a branch. It represents where we know, where we happen to last think the, um, uh, the remote repository called origin is up to. But nonetheless, it is a branch pointer. So we are going to be merging this with this. And so it'll be doing this kind of three way merge where it takes um, that one there, that one there, that one there, works out what the difference is and what's going to produce a merge commit at the end. So let's draw down first of all the bits that we kind of reasonably confident aren't going to change. Those are all still going to be commits in the history because none of this is changing history. Uh, so we still get D and we still get E. So those parts look the same. Now what's going to change? Well, we're going to get a merge commit between those two. So we're going to see a new commit and let's call it G coming in here. Git merge origin master. Is GitHub changing? No, we're not doing a push. We're not doing a push. Uh, GitHub origin hasn't heard about our change. So origin master is still pointing exactly where it was before. Last, our local repository still thinks that is where origins master pointer is pointing. 
Um, but we've now merged this into master that we were on. And so... Pardon me a moment. My, my computer made a funny sound that I just wanted to check the recording hadn't stopped. And so now our local master pointer is now pointing to G. And we've still got master checked out. So that is where head is pointed to. So that's what happens after git merge origin master. Now the next one that, hap that we ask for. E. Git. git push origin master and I've said assume this is successful so assume it's not turned out that someone has done a push to git uh, to github in the meantime and so github uh, doesn't say <coughs> you need to pull before you push please so git push origin master what's that going to do to our um, uh, to our commit graph. Well, all of these commits are going to end up looking the same. This isn't going to create any new uh, cre any new commits. We are just telling the remote uh, about uh, some stuff and doing a fast forward merge on origin. And we are only allowed to do a fast forward merge on origin. And what, what do I mean by that? Well, so if this is what our history look like without the branch pointers as it was our master was up to here origins master was over there and we are telling uh we are telling github we're pushing this stuff up and saying um would you mind uh updating your master to be where our master is and it's a it's a merge but it's a fast forward merge because this one here is strictly behind this one it just needs to move the pointer it doesn't need to create any new commits and a git push will generally refuse to create any new uh, commits. Um, it'll only do fast forward merges. And so now still our local master hasn't changed. We've not created any com new commits. Our local head doesn't change. We've still got um, we've still got um, master checked out. But origin master is going to move from there to there. Uh, because that is now where we know that github's master pointer is up to because we've just uh, in this git push made it point there and so that was the last step of that one and so that is the 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 the, the solution video uh, for the week four tutorial uh, an exercise in understanding how the directed acyclic graph uh, of your git history changes as you uh, do particular common git commands.